There is no way from France in the north to Ashland in the south that you can say some Mitchell and someone doesn't know. Everyone knows who he was. He made no bones about what he had to say. Sometimes he drew enmity. Sometimes he drew anger. But whatever he said came from the heart. And it behoves us all to know that the man we are losing today was not an ordinary son of the soil. He was not given this new son measure by accident. It was divine. And I want you to know that among the things that he had opened our minds to in this country was the first request for the poor to rise above the poverty and claim a part of this little world. This land for the landless program has made the transformation in this country that is second to none. All you hear going on now, some of us are very ungrateful to be looking number of good things. But even the lands that we own and the houses that we have built today came from the claims is revolutionary mind. Especially in the, in the, in the river zone, where people got all the estates' lands and transformed them into agriculture, into housing, and into all kinds of facilities that are made us rich today. He is the one who increased the numbers of people who were receiving public assistance. I would never forget one day when we were doing the budget and there was an excess of funds to be dealt with. And all of us were there boggling our minds as to what to do. As the team said, transform it into people who need. Put more names on the public assistance list. Find them out where they are. And we doubled the amount from 1,800 to 3,900 people receiving public assistance at that time. In addition to that, it was increased from 50 to 75 dollars or whatever it was. And so many people were grateful. All the roads expansion that took place in this country came on the civilians. All that is taking place now is nicing up what he has accomplished. But the idea, don't forget, the idea of Google roads when we were calling them booty tracks, will carry the name of the James Mitchell. Even now that he's gone, they will remember the booty track he provided and allow people to go to church, to school, and to every social occasion. As a matter of fact, it brought communities together where people could socialize with infants. They could meet and talk, they did not have to wear three pairs of shoes to get them in order. It has meant a lot to people. The Cumberland Health Project when it started, we were wondering whether to close it down or can continue. So James and the says it's true. We do with people, electricity, that is great. By the time it was completed, the electricity expansion in this country was significantly improved. When we took over government, I don't forget, when I took over government in 1994, when I went to the Ministry of Works, accessibility to electricity in this country was 47%. When they left in 1998, it was 97%. 3% of this country didn't have accessibility, and that was it. Mostly, not mostly, uh, my own, when we were just building the plant to make it accessible and to give it 100% coverage. These are things that make a difference in people's lives. So James has touched every heart and every soul. In every way possible, housing expansion, growth expansion, Back walls and retention walls. Whatever you can think of, Sir James's name is applied. I could not forget when we started writing the hard roads, some of the the political ploy. Today, that political ploy is being employed. We really need your cost growth. Every other thing now, we want a light. Because the idea has been planted, first and foremost, not only by people's employment but by Sir James himself leading the movement to ensure that people got what they wanted. Another thing of the court, the abolition of the famous dead jewels. Many of us forget what the law of the dead jewels are significant because people who gathered and who got their gifts the gifts of people could not access them because of the fact that the dead jewels that had been was simply not they were very interested. Change that as well. And to the many of us small hands, we don't have to get paid at and sit down. Oh, 
que el fecha de Dios. Again, sabes en Cristo se vendió Dios. Happen every year. What it is one point five or two percent or whatever. We made sure that public officers got some money today to disrupt the program. We have about ten percent increase. Twenty years in office have not seen ten percent increase. Twenty years in office by a change of administration has not seen ten percent increase. So James was almost done. He was he was satisfied with his word. If he gave his word, he will keep it. If he told you to do something, he can rush to show it. He used to say, "Can carry the lamp like one in this company." Oh Lord, all of us who saw Mr. James started off as young boys who knew nothing about Parliament. It was not easy for this gentleman to mold a band and a crowd of people who were ignorant, more or less, of parliamentary proceedings. By the time he was finished, every single parliamentary corrupt had done its own, not only in Parliament. But also in Parliament, outside the Parliament, and in the Caribbean and internationally. I am not afraid to say and speak that the James has led a character, has led a character of people that can only be grateful. He has left an institution that cannot be forgotten. This building was constantly right by him, and when I thought it was impossible, most of us thought it was impossible. To hear what we have here. He has left no stone unturned to get this done. Us parliamentarians made our contributions, and he insisted that we do so. But look at us today. We are the only political party that has a building of this stature anywhere in Eastern Caribbean. And this building must carry the city in his name forever. And who we are thankful for this. Because it symbolizes the fact that the man who led us, the man who brought us here, is the man who taught into the future. And Friday, what is a common one for you? But you are from the Galileans as well, and also from the Galileans. I am from the Galileans. Your order is very tall. So, James, you stood upon you, telling the people. People in this country are expecting that challenge to go, not small enough to go. You are challenged, not by me, by all of us as a country. Follow in Sir James's footsteps. People will say what they want. But let me tell you, when you are guided by the stars of heaven, you are aware of them. You are the foot in charge. The target is not before. I just to do so. On the eloquent guidance of him being able to hear, always concerned what he was doing and what he was saying, make the adjustments and move forward. Thank you. Uh, 
our religious resource, and our name was enamored with that. It was Sir James who seconded, who requested that our name be seconded to St. Vincent in the 1980s as part of a very aggressive plan on the part of Sir James that um, the Honorable Mr. Scott just canvassed in terms of revolutionary changes to the landscape of St. Vincent that afforded the social dynamism and economic dynamism that was never seen before, and frankly has not been seen since. So James did that. And part of that plan involved requesting this environment of our to St. Vincent to help steer the economy, to then achieve an IMF rate description rating of much to praise it was called as a result. Now why canvas all of this? Because if you're going to take a look at a relationship between two men, a relationship which we all know ultimately um, experiences challenges, to understand the foundation of it, but we must look at it holistically. Because regardless of the differences that emerge between them, politically speaking, in latter years, what connected these men never changed. That was a vision of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and of Vincentes having the agency to determine their paths economically, socially, and otherwise. And so as different as their views might have ultimately become, they're always done in service of nation. And so there was a respect between these two men that never died. The passage of time tends to round all the edges, any barbs are always thrown. And it is done so in this case. Our name reflects very fondly on St. James and on the early days of the development of St. Vincent and the Genesis. And credits to St. James largely with what progress St. Vincent and the Genesis has seen. And so on his behalf, on behalf of my family, we extend our deepest condolences to his family. And we are thankful that one of the legacies of their relationship is a relationship between their daughters. And so I am going to ask that we just offer a simple thanks. Amen to God for having afforded us Sir James and his passion for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you. <laughs> Colleagues, this is a sad and solemn time for all of us. This moment is particularly poignant and painful because we are here for the last time in the company of our founder, longtime leader and inspiration for what from an idea and tentative steps forward at its founding in December 1975 became a political institution and a force for change and for good in our country. I speak of our beloved New Democratic Party. It is so beautiful to see here today, and I hope I don't miss anybody, Jerry and Marcus and Alan, Burton and Kingsley, Hobby, Glenn, who toiled with Sir James, and some of course have gone on to make NDP governance in this country transformative for the people. We also remember those who have gone. John Horn, Pamela Campbell. And I think I missed out Monty who's here amongst us as well. Monty Roberts. 
I told him he's always in the pictures with Sir James. Whenever you see Sir James in a truck, one day somewhere in the background. <laughs> Ambassador Denny. This is the problem when you call names, you have to call everybody. So, you will remember the events and the meetings. I'm talking about those persons who were there with him at the beginning. And the decisions that you took one by one. As you considered them, you took them with Sir James. And together, built a record and a legacy that is rich and undeniable. It is for us now to embrace that legacy and commit ourselves to carrying it forward. So it is also beautiful to see amongst us the present parliamentarians, Daniel, Terence, Fitz, Nature, I'm running out of time and they will forgive me. <laughs> K, Major, Israel, Chevron, and all our members who are here to carry on the task. And Patel. <laughs> well done. The task for us is to commit ourselves to carrying the baton forward. Well, we moon, Sir James, let us draw strength from his example. His last breath signaled the end of a productive life, but it also signaled the beginning of his legacy. For every end also signals a beginning. It is beautiful that a member of his family my friend Louise is here to receive on behalf of his entire family our deepest gratitude for the tireless work and marvelous accomplishments of Sir James. His family shared him with us, his colleagues, and with the nation, all their lives. I must know that we are grateful now and will always remember. It is in that spirit that I here announce that as a small token of that appreciation and as a sign of our commitment to continue to pursue the positive vision for our country that Sir James had and for which he lived, that I announce here today that we will commemorate and further the work of Sir James Mitchell by initiating an annual memorial lecture in his honor, in his name. This will be an opportunity for us as a nation to consider matters of national development and public service, to help to point the way forward, and to inspire particularly young people to embrace the responsibility of creating that way forward. Further, as you know, and as Jerry explained, this great edifice here, in which we now gather, which we call Democrat House, was conceived and built by Sir James and his many colleagues who worked with him in government over the years. I mentioned the names. This majestic building, with its strong and imposing walls, stand as an outward manifestation of the strength and resolve of our great party to persevere and to continue to be a force for good in our country. We must always stand for democracy. We must always stand for the rule of law. 
and for the development of our people, led by our people, for the benefit of our people. It is fitting, therefore, that this building and all that it represents be also visibly associated with the name Sir James, not just in its history, but in its future. So I announce here again today that we as a party, as his friends, as the bearers of his legacy, take this small step in naming this great hall in which we now witness his passing in honor of Sir James. So that where we now stand, we'll be called the Sir James Mitchell Auditorium. <laughs> this will mean that from henceforth, every time we gather here, his name will be spoken and his presence will be felt. And that, my friends, is how it should be. My friends, thank you for the honor to serve you as your current president of our great party. I will always do my best for it, and I believe in my heart that our great founder did. We have much work to do. And Sir James taught us that we must always keep working for the good of our people. This is my commitment, and I am certain it also is yours. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Louise, and your entire family. Thank you to the members of the media, to my colleagues. May God continue to bless us all, and may God bless us all. May he rest in peace. Thank you very much, President Friday. My father's two greatest achievements were, firstly, creating a property-owning democracy, where he strengthened and grew the middle class of this country. His second greatest achievement was the creation of the New Democratic Party. This New Democratic Party is indeed his legacy. His legacy is only as strong as we all make it to be. And so today I charge our president, Dr. Godwin Friday, all of us here and everyone in the country working together with this party to keep that legacy strong. I thank you, Dr. Friday, for the honors that you have bestowed on my father, which I graciously accept today on behalf of the family. But I would warn you, in true Sir James's terms, that if this auditorium is going to be named after him, it always has to be spick and span, top notch. And he will say to you that I really appreciate you cleaning up the facade of the headquarters today for me, but. I don't want to see it like this just today. I want to see it like this all the time. A special thank you to Gigi and Tyrone for their special efforts in their work to make sure that the Democrat House is sparkling today for my father. My father was a father to the nation, a father to this party. And like the relationship between fathers and their children, 
mine included, my father's relationship with this party that he created did not always go smoothly. And my sister Maya Eustace alluded to this and to the differences that they wore from time to time between Sir James and Anna Eustace. But in all that was said and done, my father did it out of his love for this party and always wishing for the best for the New Democratic Party. My father was no diplomat. He was a politician. And sometimes he spoke in a raw way that would have <laughs> certainly allowed some. But at the end of the day, the ties that bind him with this party are ties that can never be broken. My father was very specific about the details of his funeral. And up to the last days, he is the one who gave the instructions who to call, who he wanted to talk to. And one of the persons that he insisted on speaking with in the last days of his life was Mr. Adam Eustace. And Maya graciously facilitated that call and he said to Adam, Adam, I am in the departure lounge. And so the love and respect between those two gentlemen never ever died. When my father became very suddenly ill, and it soon became apparent that it was terminally so, I got amazing support. My sister Sabrina has just joined us. The support and outpouring of love that we got from the NDP family was just absolutely amazing. I believe one of the first persons to show up to give blood when he needed was Dr. Godwin Friday. Soon followed by Ben Exeter and daughter of the late Honorable John Horn, Zinger Horn, as well as many other persons from our walks of life in St. Vincent. So when we needed support, the NDP family was there. You saw us through the thick and thin and one of my personal greatest bedrocks of support through my father's illness and through my grief has been Maya Eustace. And I want to thank her from the bottom of my heart. So my sister has now joined us, so I can, I don't know if you've heard the news that they, this is now being named the James Mitchell Auditorium. So in closing, the family wishes to thank the entire NDP family for the love and support you've given us through our grief in this time. And we want to thank you for already, so early on, honoring his legacy in such a beautiful way today. We thank you very much, and we are very much strengthened by your love and support. Everybody thinks that I am the closest person to Sir James, but I have news for you. This lady cooked for him every day. And you know, that kind of love that you get from somebody who is actually providing your food on a daily basis. So she is actually, Sabrina, the closest one to Daddy. Thank you, Louise. I was stuck in traffic, so I didn't know, didn't hear what, what you said previously, but Certainly, being as close to my father as I was, there was one thing that you could never doubt about him. He was a politician through and through. Every part of him was a politician. He loved this country, and he sacrificed a lot for it. I always used to tell him when he spoke of his beloved MDP 
that his blood was definitely yellow. <laughs> It was, politics was a part of his daily life, even in his retirement. It was what he thought about when he woke, talked about to Vincentians, friends, visitors. It was his life. And the service to this country from since we were children was something that we accepted. We accepted that we shared our father with the nation, and we were prepared to make that sacrifice. Because to do anything else would have been wrong. And frankly, we had no choice. True. <laughs> but it was ingrained in us that we were to serve. That was our mission as a family. And in many ways, my sisters and I, we do so. Not always in politics, but in other parts of society in this country, helping the social fabric of St. Vincent and Grenadines. So to echo Louise's words, thank you to the NDP family. You are all so dear to my father. You brought him a lot of joy in your love and support of him. And we appreciate that friendship and support. And we certainly know that his legacy will live on probably long after all of us are gone. Thank you again for my time. Permit me, if you will, to say to members of Sir James's family, please note that my family and I pray with you and you're in our prayers. As we mourn his loss and give thanks to God for his life's work in this our beloved land, we say, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. In this moment, we receive the body of our brother, Prime Minister Sir James Fitzalan Mitchell, who served as the second Prime Minister of our country in this building, Democrat House, that he was greatly responsible for building. It's an outward symbol of his labor. He served four consecutive terms as Prime Minister. He had to build our country, to raise it up, not only for those of us in the present time, but for generations yet to come, for those yet to be born. He was the last living parliamentarian to have served at our independence in 1979. As an economist by profession, he helped to transform the agricultural sector of our country by establishing a landholding democracy, enhancing the lives of our nation's hundreds of farmers and Vincentians generally. He remained active in the politics of our nation. He not only built this building where we receive his body here today, he helped us to build a new and great country. And for that, we give God thanks. For that, we praise God. And for that, we honor the legacy of our beloved brother by building for posterity an even greater house, a greater country where we stand among the council of nations as a truly great land who cares for her people and lifts them all up until we all become what God has dreamed and intended 
for us and our country to be. We received the body of our brother James Fitz Allen, our servant leader, in the building that he built, Democrat House, truly receiving him and giving thanks for him in the country that he helped to build anew. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory. Spring, how